March 7th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Numbers chapters 9 through 11 from the Old Testament. The Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they had come out of the land of Egypt. The Israelites are to observe the Passover at its appointed time. In the fourteenth day of this month at twilight, you are to observe it at its appointed time. You must keep it in accordance with all its statutes and all its customs. So Moses instructed the Israelites to observe the Passover. And they observed the Passover on the fourteenth day of the first month at twilight in the wilderness of Sinai, in accordance with all that the Lord had commanded Moses. So the Israelites did. It happened that some men who were ceremonially defiled by the dead body of a man could not keep the Passover on that day. So they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. And those men said to him, We are ceremonially defiled by the dead body of a man. Why are we kept back from offering the Lord's offering at its appointed time among the Israelites? So Moses said to them, Remain here and I will hear what the Lord will command concerning you. The Lord spoke to Moses, Tell the Israelites if any of you or of your posterity become ceremonially defiled by touching a dead body or are on a journey far away, then he may observe the Passover to the Lord. They may observe it on the fourteenth day of the second month at twilight. They are to eat it with bread made without yeast and with bitter herbs. They must not leave any of it until morning, nor break any of its bones. They must observe it in accordance with every statute of the Passover. But the man who is ceremonially clean and was not on a journey and fails to keep the Passover, that person must be cut off from his people, because he did not bring the Lord's offering at its appointed time. That man must bear his sin. If a resident foreigner lives among you and wants to keep the Passover to the Lord, he must do so according to the statute of the Passover and according to its custom. You must have the same statute for the resident foreigner and for the one who was born in the land. On the day that the tabernacle was set up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, the tent of the testimony, and from evening until morning there was a fiery appearance over the tabernacle. This is the way it used to be continually. The cloud would cover it by day, and there was a fiery appearance by night. Whenever the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after the Israelites would begin their journey, and in whatever place the cloud settled, there the Israelites would make camp. At the commandment of the Lord, the Israelites would begin their journey, and at the commandment of the Lord, they would make camp. As long as the cloud remained settled over the tabernacle, they would camp. When the cloud remained over the tabernacle many days, then the Israelites obeyed the instructions of the Lord and did not journey. When the cloud remained over the tabernacle a number of days, they remained camped according to the Lord's commandment, and according to the Lord's commandment they would journey. And when the cloud remained only from evening until morning, when the cloud was taken up the following morning, then they would travel on. Whether by day or by night, when the cloud was taken up, they traveled. Whether it was for two days, or a month, or a year, that the cloud prolonged its stay over the tabernacle, the Israelites remained camped without traveling, but when it was taken up, they traveled on. At the commandment of the Lord they camped, and at the commandment of the Lord they traveled on. They kept the instructions of the Lord according to the commandment of the Lord by the authority of Moses. The Lord spoke to Moses, Make two trumpets of silver. You are to make them from a single hammered piece. You will use them for assembling the community and for directing the traveling of the camps. When they blow them both, all the community must come to you to the entrance of the tent of meeting. But if they blow with one trumpet, then the leaders, the heads of the thousands of Israel, must come to you. When you blow an alarm, then the camps that are located on the east side must begin to travel. And when you blow an alarm the second time, then the camps that are located on the south side must begin to travel. An alarm must be sounded for their journeys. But when you assemble the community, you must blow, but you must not sound an alarm. The sons of Aaron, the priests, must blow the trumpets, and they will be to you for an eternal ordinance throughout your generations. If you go to war in your land against an adversary who opposes you, then you must sound an alarm with the trumpets. 
and you will be remembered before the Lord your God, and you will be saved from your enemies. Also in the time when you rejoice, such as on your appointed festivals or at the beginnings of your months, you must blow with your trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, so that they may become a memorial for you before your God. I am the Lord your God. On the twentieth day of the second month, in the second year, the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle of the testimony. So the Israelites set out on their journeys from the wilderness of Sinai, and the cloud settled in the wilderness of Paran. This was the first time they had set out on their journey, according to the commandment of the Lord, by the authority of Moses. The standard of the camp of the Judites set out first according to their companies, and over his company was Nashon, son of Amminadab. Over the company of the tribe of Issacharites was Nathanael, son of Zawar, and over the company of the tribe of the Zebulonites was Elion, son of Helon. Then the tabernacle was dismantled, and the sons of Gershon and the sons of Merari set out, carrying the tabernacle. The standard of the camp of Reuben set out according to their companies. Over his company was Eliezer son of Shedir, over the company of the tribe of the Simeonites, was Shelumiel, son of Zerushadai, and over the company of the tribe of the Gadites was Eliasaph, son of Duel. And the Kohathites set out, carrying the articles for the sanctuary. The tabernacle was to be set up before they arrived, and the standard of the camp of the Ephraimites set out according to their companies. Over his company was Elishama, son of Amihad. Over the company of the tribe of the Manassehites was Gamaliel, son of Pediazer. And over the company of the tribe of the Benjamites was Abidon, son of Gideoni. The standard of the camp of the Danites set out, which was the rear guard of all the camps by their companies. Over his company was Ahiezer, son of Amashadai. Over the company of the tribe of the Asherites was Pegliel, son of Akron, and over the company of the tribe of the Naphtalites was Ahira, son of Enon. These were the traveling arrangements of the Israelites according to their companies when they traveled. Moses said to Hobab, son of Ruel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, We are journeying to the place about which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come with us, and we will treat you well, for the Lord has promised good things for Israel. But Hobab said to him, I will not go, but I will go instead to my own land and to my kindred. Moses said, Do not leave us, because you know places for us to camp in the wilderness, and you could be our guide. And if you come with us, it is certain that whatever good things the Lord will favor us with, we will share with you as well. So they traveled from the mountain of the Lord three days' journey, and the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord was traveling before them during the three days' journey to find a resting place for them. And the cloud of the Lord was over them by day, when they traveled from the camp. And when the Ark traveled, Moses would say, Rise up, O Lord, may your enemies be scattered, and may those who hate you flee before you. And when it came to rest, he would say, Return, O Lord, to the many thousands of Israel. When the people complained, it displeased the Lord. When the Lord heard it, his anger burned, and so the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some of the outer parts of the camp. When the people cried to Moses, he prayed to the Lord, and the fire died out. So he called the name of that place to Bera, because there the fire of the Lord burned among them. Now the mixed multitude who were among them craved more desirable foods, and so the Israelites wept again, and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat freely in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now we are dried up, and there is nothing at all before us except this manna. Now the manna was like coriander seed, and its color like the color of delium. And the people went about and gathered it and ground it with mills or pounded it in mortars. They baked it in pans and made cakes out of it. It tasted like fresh olive oil. And when the dew came down on the camp in the night, the manna fell with it. 
Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, everyone at the door of his tent. And when the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly, Moses was also displeased. And Moses said to the Lord, Why have you afflicted your servant? Why have I not found favor in your sight, that you lay the burden of this entire people on me? Did I conceive this entire people? Did I give birth to them? That you should say to me, carry them in your arms as a foster father bears a nursing child to the land which you swore to their fathers? From where shall I get meat to give to this entire people? For they cry to me, give us meat that we may eat. I'm not able to bear this entire people alone because it is too heavy for me. But if you are going to deal with me like this, then kill me immediately. If I have found favor in your sight, then do not let me see my trouble. The Lord said to Moses, Gather to me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom you know are elders of the people and officials over them, and bring them to the tent of meeting. Let them take their position there with you. Then I will come down and speak with you there, and I will take part of the spirit that is on you and will put it on them, and they will bear some of the burden of the people with you so that you do not bear it all by yourself. And say to the people, Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, and you will eat meat. For you have wept in the hearing of the Lord, saying, Who will give us meat to eat? For life was good for us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you meat, and you will eat. You will eat not just one day, nor two days, nor five days, nor ten days, nor twenty days, but a whole month, until it comes out your nostrils and makes you sick. Because you have despised the Lord who is among you and have wept before him, saying, Why did we ever come out of Egypt? Moses said, The people around me are 600,000 on foot, but you say I will give them meat that they may eat for a whole month? Would they have enough if the flocks and herds were slaughtered for them? If all the fish of the sea were caught for them, would they have enough? And the Lord said to Moses, Is the Lord's hand shortened? Now you will see whether my word to you will come true or not. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. He then gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and had them stand around the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to them, and he took some of the spirit that was on Moses and put it on the 70 elders. When the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but did not do so again. But two men remained in the camp. One's name was Eldad, and the other's name was Medad, and the spirit rested on them. Now they were among those in the registration, but had not gone to the tabernacle. So they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his choice young men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. Moses said to them, Are you jealous for me? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Then Moses returned to the camp along with the elders of Israel. Now a wind went out from the Lord and brought quail from the sea and let them fall near the camp about a day's journey on this side and about a day's journey on the other side, all around the camp and about three feet high on the surface of the ground. And the people stayed up all that day and all that night and all the next day and gathered the quail. The one who gathered the least gathered ten homers and they spread them out for themselves all around the camp. But while the meat was still between their teeth, before they chewed it, the anger of the Lord burnt against the people, and the Lord struck the people with a very great plague. So the name of that place was called Kibroth Hatava, because there they buried the people that craved different food. The people traveled from Kibroth Hatava to Hazaroth, and they stayed at Hazaroth. God, it must have been so exciting as they started walking towards the promised land. Banners flying, trumpets sounding, everybody in their different groups, a couple million people in their different groups, all the pieces of the temple, and most importantly, your presence in a cloud uh, directing them. And I think that they must have just been so, almost, I suspect some of the kids were even marching. It was just such an exciting time for them. But we know what's coming. We know they're about to start to whine and complain again uh, and spend 40 years doing so. 
And I think about that in my own life, that how could they complain? They have you in their presence and they have this amazing thing that is happening to them and this excitement and the celebration and, and yet they're whining and complaining. And I think about my own life and how, <laughs> how I am allowed to be in your presence every day through the Holy Spirit living in my heart. How you do amazing, miraculous things in my life every single day. Huge celebrations of all the blessings that you keep pouring into my life. The amazing people you put in my life and situations. It's pretty incredible, but yet you'll find me within hours forgetting all this incredibleness. Forgetting the celebration. Forgetting that I'm in your midst. And I'm whining or complaining about something else. So today, God, I just pray, I pray that that celebration, that you are, are with us through your son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit living inside of us, that we are in your presence. We don't need a cloud directing us. You live inside of us. The temple lives inside of us now, and how exciting that is. Let us just be intentional today of keeping that first and foremost as we step out into our own parade, as we, <laughs> as we head different places throughout the day. Perhaps not to a promised land, uh, but definitely direct our steps in that fashion and allow us to hear you, um, to hear from the temple inside of us. God, you're just so amazing and so consistent with us and so faithful. Thank you for that. In your son's name we pray. Amen.